Hey, welcome back to CC Top Solutions. Today we're gonna to work on a project that has just been lingering for the longest time. Here, come check it out. It's our 1970 Cougar. It's actually my girlfriend's 1970 Cougar that I had recently redone all kinds of work to it, put a new 351 Windsor engine in it, and I used the original Ford FMX transmission, and that really bit me. So uh, the transmission has exploded, and it's at the point now where we're gonna go ahead and lift the car up, pull what's left of the transmission out from underneath there, and begin our conversion to a Tremec TKX transmission. This is gonna be awesome. While I'm jacking the car up, I'll play some footage from the day the transmission actually failed, and then I'll meet you guys under the car. Welcome to CC Top Solutions. Here we are on the side of Jackson Road in beautiful South Jersey. I think I just blew the engine. I'm not 100% sure. This is a 351 Windsor and the 1970 Cougar. It had close to a thousand miles on it since I installed the engine. I was cruising along 5,500 RPM and it just, no warning or anything, just boom. And if you look in here, what we're seeing, there's the torque converter. That's what's left of the transmission still bolted to the block. You can actually see right there in the center of the screen there that is a section of the block that is cracked that's where the starter bolt went through the block so the transmission is definitely destroyed the question is what went wrong did the transmission seize and then everything else is collateral damage and ended up pushing the engine forward into the radiator or did the engine seize and everything else is collateral damage and it just blew everything to pieces uh, I was at speed, so I'm very thankful that I wasn't injured and there wasn't more damage. I'm glad I wasn't, I didn't crash. The drive shaft is still connected to the rear axle. The drive shaft was spinning and banging into the floorboard and stuff the whole time I was coming to a stop. So that was a very weird and scary sensation. This all happened over the course of seconds. So it's, you know, looking back, it's like, oh man, you know, what could I have done differently? Uh, but yep. Very extensive damage. I, I, it'll be interesting to see what I find when I start taking this all apart. Figure out what parts I need to replace. I mean, at a bare minimum, we're gonna need a new transmission. What kind of transmission do we wanna go with? Well, Ford FMX, or Ford, this is a Ford FMX. Three-speed uh, automatic transmission. I could put a automatic overdrive transmission in. That might be what I end up doing. There were pieces of bell housing all over the road and stuff like that. Actually, the folks that have been driving by have been some of the nicest people ever. Uh, quite a few of them have stopped to say hello, say they love the car, ask if I'm okay. Even our town's mayor happened to drive by and he stopped and asked if I was okay. So, very positive response, nice community. Uh, I'm going to wait for a tow truck and I will update you when I start getting into this, see exactly what's wrong. Well, that gives you guys an idea of how much damage there is. See how the transmission is literally just hanging? So we're gonna roll down here and just get a closer look and then I'm gonna work on removing it. Uh, the drive shaft didn't fall all the way out. It was still connected to the rear axle which now leaks like crazy. So I'm wondering if that may have damaged the axle seal. Feels okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, so the seal is leaking and I just grabbed it and said it feels okay. That makes sense, right? <laughs> all right there's what's left of our fmx transmission as you can see our aluminum tail shaft housing well that's still connected to the to the frame so that worked i was looking for the other cup from my u-joint there it is i've gathered my thoughts i'm going to put a jack underneath the pan jack it back up kind of so it's straight and then try and get as much debris out of here as i can and then i'm going to unbolt the trans mount and try and let it all down nice and smooth one thing that's nice, once a transmission grenades like this, pretty easy to take it out. I'm gonna lower it right now. I thought you guys might wanna see what's left of it. I mean, it's just incredible the amount of damage.
There, it's down. So you can see our damage here. Let me let me take the torque converter out of the way and see what else we got going on. God, where did I leave that one torque converter bolt? Oh, there it is. So sometimes it's nice to just take a break. Transmission's out of the car. I'll show you guys some more of that tomorrow. But tonight, we're going to take the Mustang up to a car show in Mount Laurel to farm. Should be a lot of fun. I hear great things. Dan, the guy that built the transmission, told me about it. So let's go for a ride. All right, we made it to the car show, but we're way late. Apparently, uh, 4.30 is when the car starts showing up. We're here at like maybe 6, 6.30. And uh, this was the best spot we could find. They said just park anywhere. So I, I kind of like being right between the two roads. High visibility, very cool. Now, here we are, the Johnston Family Farm, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Real nice little event, a lot of fun. It's, good, uh, it's a good date night event. Of course, I'm not parked anywhere on the asphalt. I'm way behind where the camera is, but it's a prime location where I am. People pay extra for it. Yep, that's where I put the Mustang, right out there. Perfect location. Everybody can see on their way out. Johnson's Farm, June 25th, 2021. Hope these trees don't get any sap on the car. While we're at Johnson's Family Farm, we saw this awesome 67 split window Corvette. Really cool. Had auto meter gauges, whole nine. I absolutely loved it. I would have loved to have heard that car run. We also saw this really great 66 Mustang. And this was actually one of my favorite cars there. I don't know what it was. I think it was a 65 Mercury with a 428 and aluminum head. This thing was really cool. 67 Chevelle, you can never go wrong with those. 62, or this might have even been a 58 Corvette. Uh, this reminded me of that TV show Riptide. Really cool car. This Firebird looked like something out of a Mad Max movie. I love the racing instrument cluster right here. And then, look at that custom stereo. Bose. And it's a LS converted Firebird, so that car probably flies. This was a Challenger. I've always liked the taillights, which is a really cool picture. Oh, well, I got a kick out of this. So I'm, I'm showing these pictures a little out of sequence. Take note of the baby seat in the back on this Mustang. Kind of cool, right? Take note of the supercharger in the front of the Mustang. Is this New Jersey or what? There's the overall car. This is a 67 GTO, maybe a 66. I don't really know those years that well, but a uh, beautiful car. You know what? This was kind of GM row right here with the GTO, the Chevelle, and then the Corvette. Really neat. This was another 65, 66 Mustang. It was a 65, uh, and I thought that was kind of cool. This was the only other one there besides mine. This was a real nice Caddy, like a 75 maybe, or maybe 76 Caddy. I would love to drive around town in that. I, get that, I bet that probably gets about 12 miles a gallon, and it's probably, every mile counts. It's great. Oh, there's the Challenger that I had the taillight of earlier, and that Firebird. There's that Mercury and also a white Plymouth satellite that was next to it. That was a really cool car. Here's just the backs of a bunch of the cars they had parked there. It was really cool. And there's just a, a, a better overall view of a bunch of the cars. I was surprised how many of them there were supercharged. You could see a Fox Body Mustang there, and yeah, that's supercharged. There was a Cobra kit car of some kind. I'm not sure which one, but uh, it was a beautiful car. And there's video at the end of it driving away. Uh, Suicide Door Lincoln had to get a video or had to get a picture of that. And I talked to the owner. This car was cherry. It was a, I think it was a 66 or 67, but uh, beautiful shape. 462 V8. Buick GSX. Everybody likes GSXs, including me. Had to get a picture of that. Uh, this Ford Fairlane, I bet this was one of the nicest driving cars there. It had like a modern, uh, you know, what is it, uh, vintage AC, you know, retrofit kit installed and had all modern suspension. I mean, this car looked like it was just a driver's delight. This Impella looked awesome. Uh, whatever he did with the wheels and tires, and you should have heard it. The sound of this car matched the physical appearance. Kick-ass car. Uh, this is a little Plymouth GTS, Dart GTS. This was a really cool sounding car as well. This was like a 81, I think, or maybe an 80 Corvette. It was perfect condition. This was maybe a 67-ish Corvette, it was a beautiful car. I felt bad though, this one was like a dust magnet. Like, I, all the other cars didn't collect dust the way this one did. And that's it for the show. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Here we have all of our damage assemblies with the exception of both engine mounts, they are both snapped. 
and the shifter the automatic shifter the transmission actually raised up into the base plate of the shifter and cracked it so i haven't removed those from the car yet but here's everything else that was damaged the converter got wedged between the engine and the transmission. And when it wedged, it basically pushed everything like this, which resulted in the aluminum bell housing just blown to pieces and the tail shaft housing compressing against the drive shaft and actually breaking our slip yoke and crushing all of this stuff. It also resulted in some damage to our output shaft the cast iron housing and uh, when when everything kind of tried to spread from here it pushed the engine forward snapping both engine mounts which were brand new ran the uh, the fan right into our radiator my old man he's a television repair man he's got this ultimate set of tools I can fix it so I'm curious I just want to see if I can find anything that would you know, definitively say, yes, this thing starved for fluid. So let's open up the pump and just see how it looks. All right, I can see some breakage inside here. I don't really know what I'm looking at, but it's definitely broken, that's broken. I can see some breakage here. Well, I'm curious about, can I turn this input shaft? All right, let's see if I can rotate this thing. Oh, I can. Huh. So then what the heck happened? All right, so it looks like the transmission shaft did not seize. So really, I think what happened, huh. For whatever reason, the torque converter came out of the flywheel and blew everything to pieces. Wow. Well, let's look and see what went across that. So the transmission did not seize. I wonder if it had something to do, you know, with me putting the wrong bolts in here. You know, I put grade eight bolts in the, the uh, torque converter. I thought they were okay, but maybe not. So there was that. And then when I did put the torque converter on the flywheel, I had to hollow out a couple of the, a couple of the bolt holes, just a touch. I wonder if that made all the difference in the world. Huh? Wow. So it looks like it was not a transmission failure. It looks like it was the torque converter somehow coming out of the flywheel that failed it. The flywheel bolts, by the way, were tight. The flywheel was tight to the block, tight to the crank. Wow. Well, I tell you what, internet, you let me know what you think happened. Cause I'm not really sure at this point. Before I wrap this video up, let's just take a look inside this pump and see if there's anything that would make me think that this caused the failure. There it goes. Huh. So the pump spins too. All right, so it looks like our problem was just the torque converter somehow coming out of the flywheel. Well, all right, now we're waiting for our parts to show up from Silver Sport Transmission. So while we wait, let's get another car out. Let's take my old Alfa Romeo Spider out.
never driven one, I highly recommend it. Here we are, we're going like 45 miles an hour, about 1900 RPM, it's attacking right, which it probably is not. Everything shakes, you can see the window frame shaking. I'm not sure what's up with that, but it's always sort of done it, and you know, I don't care. And the tires are fairly new anyway, so it's not like a tire down of balance. It's just the way the car is. The car has character, I guess you could say. It's got spunk. favorite features of these Alfa Romeo. Check out the shifter setup. How cool is that, right? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then get this. If you're in fifth and you accidentally go to reverse, it has some sort of mechanical linkage that prevents that. Pretty neat. Uh, definitely not as cool feeling as my Hurst shifter in my 66 Mustang now. You might hear some stuff rattling in this car, but that's why it's cheap. Cheap and fun. All right, that's floored. Wow. So this kind of sounds like about the, a third of a Ferrari engine, right? <laughs> I think a Ferrari V12, this is inline four, both Italian, both delivering cam. The weird thing is this engine design really hasn't changed much since I think the late 50s when they came out with it. So if you think about that, Alfa Romeo was way ahead of its time coming up with this kind of stuff back in the 50s. And they, you know, they came up with a great idea in the late 50s, early 60s, and they never really evolved. That, that's kind of, I guess, their downfall. They just kept it this uh, real small setup, real small, relatively low horsepower engine. Well, that was a lot of fun. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast making it. Tons of fun driving the Alpha. It's getting nice and warm, starting to enjoy the summer, playing with some of the other cars. Catch you guys in the next episode.